Right. Hey, this is Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphys, and I am the Grand I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, the Professor Russ Stevens, Uncle Joe McLaughlin, and he's the barber to the stars, Hollywood Pete McGilvery. Well, we have another great show for you tonight, so boys, let's get started. But first of all, I have to wish great luck and Godspeed to my son, Max Kerman, who I took to college his freshman year, oh, his first day in that. school yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So very emotional for That's me. Early. Yeah. Right? And I wasn't crying. That wasn't tears you saw. Yeah. Hey, tears, yo, it is early. Tears of joy. Yeah, he has orientation and stuff. So good luck, Maxie. See you at luck. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Good luck with the bills. He's already asked for money, and I'm not even joking. All right, so boys, I'm not panicking. Are you panicking? I'm not panicking. About Who said what? we're panicking? I'm not panicking. Three-game losing streak. The Yankees are on a four-game winning streak. The, it's the leads down to eight. Are you guys noticing yet? We well, just haven't had any adversity with this team all yeah. year, right? Were it's we weird. always afraid of Cleveland? We were, but we were, you know. Now we're, we are. Yeah. Now yeah. we right. are. But, you know, they're just taking it easy. I mean, they're resting people. Everyone can, anyone who's anyone is on the DL whenever they want to right now. Yeah, obviously your yeah. best starter in Chris Sale yeah. hasn't pitched yeah. much in the last you're month. Probably your second best starter. Erod is is still coming back from that. Yeah, although look, we've lost two games with two of our top four pitchers pitching, right? With right. Porcello and and mm -hmm. Evaldi. Yeah, and they both got roughed up a little bit. They weren't. I mean, look, they were competitive. They were good yeah. games. They were competitive both games. I didn't see the first game. I saw a little of the second one. And I thought he made good pitches. He, they were just a really good team, and they ran. You yeah. know, when you see Melky Cabrera stretching oh one out, you're going, God, these yeah. guys are aggressive. And that's, to your point, Terry Francona. Terry Francona, yeah. right. <laughs> well, there, there really were. There were a lot of hard ground ball sing singles off of Evaldi last night. And then he, you know, he gave up, uh, you know, gave up a, a home run late. But it wasn't – he didn't get hammered yeah, last night. Yeah, he gave up two outs on three pitches, and then he gave up three runs in yeah. the next five. All right, boys, hang in with me on this. The Red Sox – are 44 wins at home and 44 wins away. It just feels like their energy level is a little better away. Would you would you say that? They're a season? little more relaxed on the road. They seem to have had more of the, um, you know, down early and not caring and coming back late well, you know, on the road type wins. You know, well, they're a little more uh, loose. You know, well, yeah. remember, too, when you're on the road, you get your first at bat. And they have had a tendency all year long to put runs up in the first. So I think what's nice about, yeah. you know, on the road for them is the pad. they're up one, two, nothing sometimes. And they're, that other team's already chasing them from behind. So that's a good reason to, you know, to think that they could do well on the road. Do we make uh, – do Boston fans make our teams nervous? Because the Celtics had a better record away last year than at home. And that mm. never happens to good teams in the NBA. Never. Well, the other way to think of it is they're both just, re you know, the Celtics were mm -hmm. a really good team. The Red Sox are a really good team. When you're that good of a team, you're, you're pretty good on the road. Look, I think the big thing over the last couple of days is you don't want to lose to teams who you're likely to be facing in the playoffs, right? It just, it creates a little bit of you bad mojo. You want to at least get the split. But, right. but right. you also don't want to show them anything. You want them to see the Evaldis and the Brian Johnsons of the world. I get Because that. they're not going to be show. They're not going to be playing in the playoffs. Sure. They Evaldi's won't be starting. not going to make that roster? No. He'll make no, the roster. Evaldi will make it as But he won't be a yeah. starter. Do you Probably. think some residual, do you think Cle Cleveland has our number? Do you think they're in our heads a little bit? I just think Frank Cohn is a really good coach. Tito's in, in the fans' he really heads. Is. I'll yeah. say that. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. He He's right there on top of the dugout focus right through the game. I mean, he wants to win badly. He, 
You can yeah. see that he can almost taste it. Tito's bill of the fo- of the baseball world. Would it's you all right? Tito cares about is, is is managing baseball games. Right. Yeah. That's all he cares about. <laughs> no, that's right. his whole life. Right? Yeah, that's they, it. They want to play from. They play hard. His teams play yeah. hard. Yeah. And they're disciplined, and they that and they're chicken and beer. And so yeah. we're <laughs> still you, best manager you've ever seen for the Red Sox. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, but I would I said that when he left too. I, yeah, not just and I saw Pinky Higgins. But it was probably, <laughs> yeah, probably right. time for him to go, though, right? I mean, when when he left, it seemed like it was pretty much time for him to go. Oh yeah, he totally butchered that last season, that yeah. September, by oh, yeah. keeping Wakefield uh, in the rotation so he could get his. It was, uh, it was like he didn't give it's a rat's ass. The players ass love him, you know. Right, the whole Daniel Bart situation. Yo, he didn't Daniel care Bart. at all. He was letting anything go. So he, let me ask you a question, though. I mean, do you? How would we rate uh, Cora this year in terms of uh, performing above expectations? Just, I'm talking about his day in day out management of the team on the field. Oh well, because we had high expectations for Alex Cora. Yeah, but oh, I don't know. I didn't have coach. this high an expectation. I, I, yeah, I rate him pretty high this yeah. year. Well, he's done a great job, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, sure, you can criticize him a little bit on the Porcello. Porcello gets mm. injured a little bit. Yeah. He doesn't take Porcello out. Two pitches yeah. later, some guy up from the minors is taking him deep, but, and they're losing the game. Yeah, that's true, and, and there have been a handful of others, but I can't really count too many times where I've thought he's made some egregious de- decision. I thought yeah. he's managed the bullpen for a first-time manager. Yeah, he's managed the bullpen pretty well. It and helps he, when you're up four runs every yeah. game. It, too. it does. But and he's he's really managed the clubhouse well. Yes. He looked around. He said, "Hanley, Dustin, you guys have problems. Get out of no, here." I don't think he did that. You guys are so down on Dustin. I don't think Alex Cora is friends with Dustin Pedroia. He did not ask Pedroia. Oh, to he be, absolutely no, yeah. did. Joe's yeah. correct. Yeah, no. Look. You saw you guys are wrong. There's no. He was there's a nothing to suggest yeah. that. Look, he you was, saw the, the, the day before they sent him out that he was biting Alex Cora's ear off during the game. They showed it on man. Nesson. Next thing you know, it's he's no, in Arizona. This is the conspiracy theorists among us. Well, what would he be doing now? You know, the last since they sent him to Arizona. Well, you're making my what point. What would he have been doing? You're making my point for me. They sent him to Arizona so he could rehab full time with with. And the he was full, a pain in the ass around but here. But he absolutely, he's the old guard. They wanted to get rid of the old well, guard. I, I think that I agree. I think that he and uh, and Cora are good friends. But I also agree that maybe him leaving was helpful for guys like Bogarts and other. I don't disagree with that up. either. But I don't think mm-hmm. Alex Cora banished Dustin Pedroia to Elba like Napoleon or anything. Oh, there's no <laughs> question. When Kevin Euclid, all right, I mean, I'm still talking about. Look, he's in the Kevin Euclid era. And remember Kevin Euclid with Bobby Valentine? Yeah. That's not how we do that around here. Yeah. Dustin has that same ethic. What are you talking about? This is the guy that ruined du- his Dustin, season last year. Dustin sold, used those exact same words last year. Out. Dustin Pedroia ruined the season last year. He sold the team it out in Baltimore. It didn't have anything to do with the fact that Chris Sale pitched lousy in the playoffs. No, or Dustin. The bullpen and blow, blow. No, no. It, it was clearly a clubhouse issue and with, with everybody. Pitchers, catchers, positional there was, players, There was coaches. clearly something wrong that's not this year. So you got to figure what's different. Yeah, J.D. Martinez is different. A new manager is different, okay? And, Pedro- and guys playing better is different. And Hanley Ramirez is gone. Yeah. You don't think Pedro Pedroia was the gone. igniter for last season for the downhill? Uh, I don't think I don't think Pedroia covered himself in glory. I'm not here defending Pedroia up and down the line. No, I just he don't lost think he his job to Brock Holt. <laughs> 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 and that's the end of that. That's going to hurt. That's the future MVP. every time. <laughs> Come on. They're, look, they've gone on this wonderful streak since Dustin Pedroia was sent away. No, they've gone That's, on this wonderful streak because J.D. Martinez has 38 home runs on 110 RBIs, which is exactly what this team needed. Which they didn't have last which year. Which they didn't yeah. have last year. And they have a manager who has control over the clubhouse and guys want to play for him. Did Pedroia sort of foul up last year? He Absolutely. Was in the, I'm not saying he was a cancer. He was a, like Hanley, maybe but a he was part, in the way. Okay, that's Absolutely. fine. Absolutely, yeah. I will he take was that. in the way. But I'm not taking the, he shipped, but I, you, I don't think you can put Pedroia in the same category as Bruce. Oh, no, you I think can't. it's insane. No. But he did move but him out of there. But they're glad he's gone. Yeah. They don't miss him. I will he say wanted him out of there. Knowing Pedroia's personality since he's been here, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would go home. Right, you know exactly. what I mean? He's the kind Great of guy point. that would stay in the dugout. Oh, so dressed. you're against me now, too? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not against you. <laughs> no, I do. With think. me and the, Joe. The students, <laughs> the students are rebelling. <laughs> right? No, P- no, but I P- think P- it's P- a strange thing that it doesn't. But then again, I don't think he's the type of guy that would say it wasn't me, it was them. 
So yeah, that what was do we that have? flabbergasted me when that happened. That's, when a guy of his personality can't play this trouble, right? Well, yeah. well the guy who is any cartilage in his knee can't play. Like he's yeah. not not playing because of personality or any sort of leadership characteristic. He's not playing because he's got bone on bone in his knee. He'd be out there playing if he could play. Yeah, yeah but if, if he's not playing, like in the football world, go away. Bill doesn't want to. And that could yeah. be true, yeah. and I'm not actually well, I'm not arguing football with world, that. Though. Right? No, exactly. But but I'm, it works. That that works because all he can do is sit around and fetch, right? Exactly, and. There's I think no it, more if we're talking football world, it's next man up, and who was that? Right. Brock Holt. Brock Holt. <laughs> <laughs> it always right. comes back. And there's two Jimmy people. G. There's two people it always comes back to. Jimmy yeah. G or Brock Holt. <laughs> you got to keep it going. <laughs> right, yeah. Exactly. No, right. Look. Okay, let's move on. Okay, all right. <laughs> and so Please, I had so much on. hope for Ian Kinsler. Really, I did. But he sucks. Well, give he him okay. game or two. Why am I giving him games? He's played enough and had... A, Couple of clutch situations that I'd rather have Brock Holt up. Yes, than last night he failed. No, a few yeah. times. Wow, he I wish we had the tape from last week. <laughs> I, I really do, because I kind of recall you saying, "Boy, I like this Kinsner deal." Yes, you no, did. I, I, maybe a couple <laughs> yes, weeks ago, did. but I'm disappointed. That's what we need to talk about. I'm well, disappointed. He got hurt when too, he, though. he got hurt. Right, but he's not the player but we now thought he's he was. Not hurt either. How about we give him another ten games? Uh, not much. That's more. about all they know. got That's left. In the all right, one more week. Just give him another ten games. Yeah. So, uh, all that matters at this point in time is how these guys perform in the playoffs, right? No, but right. Russ, it's very important I because agree. you have no. Look, it's very important to have to make an evaluation very soon because come the end of August, you can't pick up any guys anymore that can oh, play in the playoffs. Oh, you're not picking up another second baseman. Trust That's me. That's not this, true. There's you like can... five other guys that they pick yeah, up they have to be on the roster. Baseman. Yeah, but by the to, end of the month. The second baseman is so far down their priority list right yeah. now. It's not even. It's not they even visible three. in the playoffs. It's pitching, pitching, and more it, pitching. All that matters at this point in time is, at least in terms of that position, is how well he does in the playoffs. Just well, I got a remedy for, for all of this. Jose Iglesias. Oh my God. Uh, I loved Jose Iglesias, former Red Sox, yeah. fantastic defender, G- great voice by yes. the way. <laughs> right, exactly, and yeah. his father too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, but he, wouldn't he be a nice pickup? I the, think he would be a great pickup. And you can he he went through the conditional waiver period, so you can get him for nothing. Absolutely. Is he, still, he, he went on a tear for what? Did he find something that Yeah, he got one ball out of the infield at one what time. What are you talking about? He beat the Red Sox with a home run a few weeks ago. <clears throat> yeah. How many career home runs does he have? Count him on one year. But wouldn't you feel at the very least, Joe, comfortable to have him as a defensive replacement for say Devers yes. in the seventh inning? He's a oh, Mark, I, I he's love Mark him. Belanger type. Yeah, right, exactly. Oh, I'd love him as a late inning replacement can you afford that luxury absolutely why not right sure i think I think i'd rather getting, have another uh, pitcher on look the staff. i think getting a uh, another third baseman in whether it's inglacius or beltre or somebody makes a lot of sense because it looks like devers has a nagging hamstring injury at a minimum and then to your point he's not to be trusted late in games in no in and we haven't seen him in clutch situations either right like, and he can be pitched to, right? He's young right now. You, you don't have to yeah. throw him Devers a strike to get him out. Oh, no, no, no. Right? And that's yeah, a problem yeah. in the playoffs. And then when we saw in the Cleveland, Cleveland's not going to give you any love. <laughs> You're no. going to have to earn these victories with that pitching You're going to have to yeah. scratch it out against yeah. Cleveland. Yeah, they will. They're gonna, that's exactly right. They cannot give Cleveland four outs, or really any of those teams, Houston, New York, Cleveland. Mm. Uh, his his uh, his Oakland? Brady Cat Oakland team, A's Oakland. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. He won't be able. To, it's not that it, because he dropped Max off at college that he won't be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> he's worried about the Oakland A's. Man, the I know they're gonna. Be, I have a feeling they're gonna beat us. I just oh, I've seen God. it in a, in a not, team. We've not, always done well against Oakland. No, we haven't. The last they're not couple a playoff years, playoff team. Billy Beans, as great as he is, he can't put together a playoff. All right, team. I'm just. I'm, I'm very. Is there are two different teams. Has, has a, Billy Bean ever won a playoff series? No, that's absolutely true. Yeah, right. Exactly. But I just seem that you know how teams have our number like the New York Giants said the Patriots number I'm telling you this is Billy's be never been able to afford the top level pitching that's why he's never won a playoff yeah. series God help us all if somehow the Red Sox get eliminated by the <laughs> Oakland A's he'll go on a victory tour that will take <laughs> oh, a year he'll we'll have a brass band you will. Yeah, right. yeah seriously he'll have like monkeys jumping out of boxes <laughs> no. no I'm just going to want you to say you were right Scott that's all you live for <laughs> no, that's, 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 no, I, you don't even have to put the it, hat on <laughs> yeah right exactly alright boys before we finish the Red Sox um, I'm embarrassed because I saw in the Patriots exhibition game, they started doing the yeah. wave, 
and then the Red Sox do the wave every True. night. And I, I asked you a question because I go to other cities yeah. and I watch games. Nobody does the wave. Are we the only pathetic city left that does the wave at games? Who cares? It, and you know what? The other thing is, <laughs> is they it, it starts at the worst time. Like the other night, we had the, the we had a, a little sniff yeah, of a rally yeah. the other night. And these idiots start the wave. And I'm like, is anyone around here paying attention to this ball game? Yeah, yeah. that's who cares. The guys who are at the game. What's the answer to that? No. <laughs> and all Nobody these morons, they jump not. up, they spill their drinks. You know what I think it is, though? I actually don't think it's – I think it's the, the tourist fans in the summer. I think it's the, it's the people who are I at like the park. I like to say – think Yeah, it's, it's not the, – the diehards aren't in the bleachers. You're not going to see the, the wave in the playoffs. And, but it always seems to start in the bleachers, have you noticed? No, but that's, but that's my point. You saw the wave at the Patriots exhibition game. That wasn't tourists. That's season ticket holders doing no, that. But those are yeah, fake they, fans. They don't get to go to those, games. Right, yeah, exactly. Well, right. Right. Okay. Those season no ticket holders gave away. Yeah, those those aren't right. real fans at those season <laughs> yeah. ticket holders. Yeah, the last time they went games. to a game, Teddy they Bruce did the wave. Teddy Bruce, you always call those don't mailman call games. <laughs> I <laughs> wasn't going to say it. Only one who would take those tickets. So you've enjoyed the exhibition games? Yes, I love every one of them. Don't call them exhibition games. They're preseason games. Robert Kraft will get very very mad at you if you call them exhibition games. Robert Kraft, who gets all the money from the preseason games, yeah, right? Yeah. They do not pay. The, what a and racket even the television got. and radio rights are a hundred percent to them too. What a racket! All right, boys. Well, we're gonna go to the Patriots. And they uh, breaking news from the Grandstanders live desk. Kenny Britt, who was supposed to actually be a starting wide receiver, I think we yep. uh, spoke about a he couple was gonna weeks be ago. RX? He was cut today. Really? Yeah. Who who wasn't cut? Uh, <laughs> right. Well, your current—that's uh, a great question, Pete. Your current Patriots wide receiver depth is Julian Edelman, who mm -hmm. is not even going to play mm -hmm. for yeah. four games and is coming off an ACL, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And probably can't spell his name completely, right? <laughs> All right, you have Chris Hogan. Yeah. He's, question he's, mark. He's the go-to guy now. He's legit. Oh, you really think so? Yes. Oh, he's a legitimate. Absolutely. Receiver. He's Tom's go-to right now. Yeah. But he's not exactly a guy who can stay on by the field. By process of elimination. Right. No, but he but just he is, needs to get he's four Tom's games. guy right, right now. By yes, Joe. Yeah. By process of elimination. Yeah. How many teams in the NFL would have Chris Hogan as their number one receiver? Very few. Right? None. None. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Except well, one New anyways. Except yeah. for the New England Patriots. And then well, let's go down the right line. Philip Dorsett. Who was traded for Jacoby Brissett? Yeah. Where apparently you have to give bus up bus. Like your whole draft, like Ricky Williams, to get him Jacoby Brissett now. But do you have any faith in Philip Dorsett? No, I don't. But I'm curious to see who they kept in other than to get rid of Brett. Cordell Patterson? No, they he probably added good. He someone. He looks good. He looks good, but he's really a special teams guy, right? Mm -hmm. Eric a Decker. veteran guy like that, they let him go really so they can catch Eric Decker still hasn't team. made a catch yeah. in either game in, well, from what I can tell, him. camp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> and even the jugs machine, Eric Decker, has yet to catch a ball. Yeah. Yeah, right. He's not on the team. Yeah, Eric Decker's still on so the team. So far. No, no, no. Well, no, right no. Now. Done the I'm just they keep the 90 right, right to the end now. There's no oh, cuts. Right, this okay. is where I, I get into the whole white wide receivers. Um, McCarron, um, just a... No, he'll be cut. Um... A He's a practice squad yeah. guy. And then Here's Lu one thing, though. You know, there are two other receivers on this team, and I think probably— Lucian? No. The two other guys who catch footballs on this team, more, I think, are very important. One is Gronk, and the other is James White, right? So I'm sure that, look, they're woefully inadequate at wide receiver. I mean, you just read the names. It's obvious, right? Woefully inadequate. Hopefully they'll pick yeah. someone up. But they're probably also going to try to hack it together over the first four games— and feed Gronk and White. White is an unbelievable pass catcher. But but I will bet you that Rex Burkhead catches and more Rex passes Burkhead. than White this year. Oh, I'll yeah, bet you anything also, against that. Yeah, because he because Burkhead you can put in and yeah, they don't, know, the other know, team but, doesn't know whether you're running yeah. or passing. James White is an elite. When White's pass in there, catching. they know you're throwing. Right, which they will do anyways. Also, it seems like they they want to go towards running the ball more on more plays. When you go and draft Sony Michelle, you know. You're planning on running the ball. I think that's a great point, but they're going to have to Oh, and they drafted offensive they don't line, want him, too. They don't want Tom dropping back every yeah. play. But you know? you're going to see eight, nine in the box right now because uh, defending-wise, oh, like they're not going to have to. Was in. You're yeah. not going to be defending more than 20 yards out. The Patriots are an easy way to play. Right. To defend Gillisley right didn't look that sharp to me. 
They're well, gonna, they always put 10, forget eight in the box. They put 11 in the box when he comes in because they know they're not throwing. What's clear now is with these guys on the field, we don't have any boundary receivers, right? We don't have a fast guy who can play the boundary receiver. Yeah. We're going to a dink and dunk offense, back to the dink and dunk. And maybe every once in a while down the field of Dorset. 2001. You know, that's when they won against the Rams, right? Right. I know, but that's not the offense that's in the NFL right now. You have to stretch no, the no, field. No, no, you're right. That's what know, they're going to have to play. These guys are too big to be doing that. Well, and then you get safeties who are 6'2". Someone like Dorsett or Patterson has to yeah. make a couple plays down the field every game. He'll stretch the field. Right. Well, stretch the field. You know, they're not going to worry about him because he can't, you know, when he catches the ball, he's all, always out of bounds. So thank you, Philip Dorsett, for really yeah. figuring out how but, the field is. But, you know, is. the, fa the well, fact is, though, those guys have the they have the speed, NFL speed, and Tom Brady can put the ball where he wants. can't make the throws that Garoppolo makes. <laughs> oh, but he, of course but, he can. <laughs> and then Garoppolo, Garoppolo could have rolled out and really helped this offense and get these guys open. Not kidding. A mobile quarterback. Like Tom Ooh. Brady with his geriatric helmet. <laughs> it's absolutely kind of bizarre, no, no, he right? He's, He's got, got a helmet. crumpled zone in it helmet. now. <laughs> He's going to have like this big blown up helmet right now. It's like now. a bobblehead. <laughs> yeah, right. Wes exactly. gave it to him. Right. Yeah, right. He looked like Mr. Kazoo. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, is that kind of bizarre? You know, well, it's a preseason. He won't wear that. <laughs> I know. But I, I don't know. He looked... I, I, I don't want to say. Okay, so I don't want to say. I don't Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Maybe a give me something. Snap. Give me something. <laughs> give me one thing you're happy about with the Patriots. Can What's you that? name one thing you're happy about with the Patriots? They won right five now? Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. No, no. This really, year, it's all no, about the year. past now. No, no, what, Put on your this, little DVR and let me ask you a question. videos right now from because this, it's just the past. From this year's team, are you happy about anything? On this no, year's this team. no. I think this team could. So you're unhappy with this entire 53 man roster at this point? I don't time. find them appealing at all. I don't. Well, find wait. The who's going to beat them? What's that? Who's going to beat them? Well, in they the, could very well be oh start in oh and the two. Division. They could start oh and two. Oh and four. That's got the first tough first four. I don't think they'll go oh and four. So you're but, not happy about the defensive line? No, without without. You're no, not I happy like the about the defensive line a little bit. Okay, good. Now yeah. we're getting somewhere. What about the defensive backfield? Pretty good defensive backfield. What are you talking about? Defend Gilmore. Gilmore. Rowe. 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 You got to be kidding me. Good. Last time we the saw good Eric McCourty, Rowe. Not the bad McCourty. No, but Last the, time we saw Eric Rowe, he was getting burned by um, every wide receiver okay. Nick Foles oh, threw to. I, Nick Foles was going to so, beat anyone that day. So, <laughs> no, but still. So, okay, Eric Rowe. He made Rowe. some good throws. He was No, so good. to give yeah. me the, the, the defensive backfield twins. as a whole. What's that? The, the defensive backfield is a pretty strong defensive backfield. That's, that's one bad. of their stronger units, right? I would say. Okay. You would say one of the strong, of course, yeah, yeah, of a p pathetic defense. Oh yeah, okay, that's the fine. Yeah, right. Of the defense, I, I'm, but okay. uh, and I, I like the way the line's coming along. How did we replace Malcolm Butler, Joe? How did we replace him? He didn't you get play another well guy. Year. What are you talking about? He played fine. He did not play well all year last year. He did yeah. not play well. No even one you even said Malcolm that. Malcolm Butler oh, Malcolm admits he didn't play well. He's still one of the better tacklers. Malcolm on, on Butler the team. in a in news article last week admitted his head wasn't straight all year long. But he still wasn't. Wouldn't you agree that he was one of the better tacklers on the team? He's I better than like John like Jonathan Badamosi. The only time you have to tackle Badamose, a guy yeah. as a defensive back is when he catches the ball on you. <laughs> Are okay? you going to be happy when Jordan Richards is on the team? No, no. Are you going to be happy when Alanda Roberts is on the team? No, but those guys might not be on the team. Are you going to be point. happy when when like six McCordys are on the team? I don't think Alanda Roberts is going to be on the team. I don't think he is either. What's that? Yeah, I don't like, think he's going to be on the team. The Jordan Richards, the will twins, be and Jason McCordy's parents are on the team. That kid crossing looked. He had a. Oh, I felt bad for him. His game was so bad last week. Yeah, and he was a seventh round pick. He was a seventh round pick, right? He has no business being there. He's not going to be on the He's team. Not, got no I'm not worried about seventh ones. round picks, and I'm not worried about yeah. guys who aren't here. Just look. Their best bet is the practice squad. Yeah. What are you talking about? We, we have to fill so many positions. These seventh round picks should how, how are going many, to should be making our team right now. And Patrick many, Chung will take care of everything. Yeah, back yeah. There. How many games is this team going to win this year? Uh, nine. <gasps> Whoa. Right now, as we oh. speak. To the, Adrian, not, please tell, tell me you, you got that on tape. Adrian. Nine to seven. I'm telling you All something. Right. I think things are going to go south real okay. quick. I Put me in for 12. Yeah. No, gonna, see, you're just thinking about the machine. Win the, they're going to win the division, and they're going to go probably to the AFC Championship. And this was they'll be two and question. two, and then they'll them? roll the rest in of the division. Miami? I don't know. Buffalo? 
The Jets. The Jets. The Jets. Come on. I'm telling you, with that's the second the, coming of my I Sanchez don't know. I don't know. It's really going to be about the Patriots problem, not about the AFC East problem. Okay. It's going to be about the Patriots going nine and seven. I'm telling you something. All right, we just went through that. Let's go, guys, through the linebacking depth. Do oh, we have got it? this? They've no. got this. No, but I mean, they've got this kid Bentley who's played very well the last few weeks. Yo, and we Jordan write Bentley. these guys, and we write these guys off because they're fourth, fifth round picks. The Patriots' history is littered with fourth and fifth round picks who've been starters. Yeah. They're, they're, so we write off fifth round. We we, we love fifth round picks, but no, we have no, no use love for seventh round I, picks, which Julian. What Edelman I love was. is guys who play well in camp and then show themselves to be playing well in in in, in preseason games. Shea McClellan type guys. <laughs> exactly. Give right? me an Irish name. You're blaming them for things that haven't even happened yet. What's that? You're blaming them for things that haven't even well, happened you yet. can see that this team has huge weaknesses, and you you didn't watch that Super Bowl with the playoffs? That team they, was wait a exposed. Minute. You, you, you keep doing that, but they was in striking distance of that Super Bowl the whole game. Against a very poor team. If they made the one stop, if they'd made Philly... A, t- a turnover. That, a they were one yeah. stop away from that, winning their sixth Super Bowl last year. The quarterback year. was absolutely flawless that day. That one day in time. That Nick Foles and this was is a, flawless. Well, the defense Look, didn't. And this is a worse. Either. Would you agree Here's that this the, is a worse team? Uh, Depth-wise and personnel than the team that played in the Super Bowl. I don't think we know yet. Oh, I don't know that. Yet. I don't think yeah, we know I think yet. Russ is I right think their yet. defense could be significant. Their defensive line could be significantly better. Tough, this, yeah. you, everyone writes off Claiborne. Oh, they got this guy Claiborne. Claiborne looks good. Danny Shelton looks good. Danny Shelton looks real good, and the other kid Dante too. Dante Hightower's back. I they have more no out linebackers. Out of the four ben Noyce had a pretty good camp. And Shelton. Look. The guys like Jacksonville Jaguars, Bortles, is going to torch us because he's going to be throwing those little five-yard, seven-yard passes, and we have no linebackers to defend that, you know, I think the defensive line will put a little more pressure on this year, which will help the linebackers. They can't cover for two, three I seconds. Sure, I sure would like it. to see Trey Joe, Flowers out the there truth. a little more. Yeah. Right, but do you, do you, we have so many glaring weaknesses on this team. Would you agree? No, to go not into yet. A season I wouldn't agree yet. Asp- I wouldn't agree yet. Yeah. I don't think we know what the glaring weaknesses are it's in this so team hard. until like game three of the of the regular, the regular season. It's so hard now because they don't make any cuts, so you can't see the evolution right. of the team. Where are they? What do they think their strengths are? The offensive line, the defensive back, right? Because they're not going to do the cuts until the very end, and then all of a sudden they go to fifty three. All right, so, well, we'll talk about this later. All right, uh, let's talk about Bobby Kraft of uh, Brookline, and we love him, Bob. And, and you know, despite Paul the fact, finest. despite the fact that you had Jimmy G traded, and you just ruined the franchise for the next 10, 15 years, <laughs> and you know, you're the, the legacy of your son. But don't you worry about that. But you're so cheap that instead of of having grass on Gillette Stadium, right? You have that cheap astroturf, and what happens? You have a first round pick, and he blows out his Achilles. Uh, Achilles on a simple move that had he been playing in grass. You think he, the grass of turf has a difference of on course, the Achilles? Because that right look, he was just stepping and there's no give in that Astro turf. You're in grass. There could be fifteen variables that go into it. Now, if I remember correctly, the problem with the with the grass was that Knees. They well know that they couldn't keep it. It was a disaster by the time they get to the playoffs every year. Remember, they were replacing it. They were they would like late in the year literally bring a whole new um, turf, you yeah. know, grass into the when into we the get stadium. that freeze thaw cycle yeah. here in New England late in the year. You know, it would freeze. They'd rip up the field, and then there was nothing to but regrow. You're, you're talking about the stadium, not the um, the, the grass. I, and the grass can't I mean, regrow in that summer. But here's the thing. I think in the Northeast, there may, Pittsburgh is the only team that I know of in the Northeast, yeah. in the NFL, that has grass. Yeah, it's so hard. They rip up the field, and grass isn't going to grow around here but, in but December. Look, look at the injuries that happened because Oh, of I that agree with you. The injuries are happening all over the NFL. I mean, I agree. Like, you know, better to play it on grass. I totally – I'm not – I don't disagree with yeah, you. But I don't think it's a Patriots that. thing. I think it's an NFL – no, but it's thing. it comes down to an economic thing. It's a lot cheaper to have the turf. Well, I'm not, I'm not even I'm not thousand percent sure. I, I think I, look, has, I the turf is, Bob is Kraft, pretty expensive. I don't think Bob Kraft is that stingy that if he was going to lose players, he would put the grass in because he's still going to pay the player. He's not afraid of that type of yeah. right. Well, he lost the player. Right? Are there any yeah. other? Oh, hang on, hang on. He Are there have. any other examples of Bob Kraft cheaping out on this team? What's that? Are there any other examples of Bob Kraft? Joe, Joe, tell you right now, are they ever? 
are they ever close to the cap? No, never. Exactly. They, they, they beat the ceiling, but they never get close to it. You're right. There they, you go. In fact, they had to pay back the Players Association because they were so far away from the cap for years and years. They yeah, had to get paid back. No, they're, they're, uh, wait, whoa, 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 wait. There's like $3 million from the cap right now. Only, they if, always only if every bonus is made. Actual... You know, likely to be made bonuses. They're about twenty we're, million. We're in cap. a we're in we're deep into the salary cap conversation <laughs> yeah. of the NFL at this point. Yeah, that's all right, boys. Uh, before we go, there's going to be a surprise cut in the camp, and it's going to be Mike Gillisey. He's gone. Gone. Well, good. Can't yeah, be Kenny Britt him. anymore because he's right. gone. So we wouldn't consider Dwayne any of the, either the Allen, Dwayne Allen, or the punter Ryan Allen. That wouldn't be a surprise, mm -hmm. right? No. What, would Mike Gillespie be the biggest surprise if he no, got No, Malcolm. 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 I think, um, I think uh, no. <laughs> they trade Hightower, really? I think, um, oh, my God. I think Malcolm Brown's going to get. my second favorite player. Malcolm Brown's going to get cut or traded. How oh, about, that right? oh, how about big, big one? Uh, that's Ryan Allen? That's what, yeah, that's what I said. Who's both your Allen's first favorite team. player? What's that? Who's your first he doesn't like any of them. He's, there, there's not a guy on the New England Patriots that's, that's got true. Kerman Tom likes. Brady. I love Tom Brady. Oh, Tom Brady's your oh, favorite man. player? Yes, he is. I have Jeez, his, I hate I have to be your least favorite. <laughs> I have his jersey. All right, boys. That's our show for tonight. I want to thank the boys. I want to thank everyone not behind Jimmy the scenes. Jimmy G. Of course, the lovely and talented Adrian. Jimmy Garoppolo. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in again next Wednesday night at 630 for another edition of the Grand Standers Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night. <laughs> the elephants are in town. <laughs> Here comes the circus. <laughs> <laughs>